Let's do news. Welcome to news. Today's date, January 2nd, 2019. It is the new year. No more of the old year. 2018 is over. You're going to fuck it up every time you write 2018 or 19 down. You're going to fuck it up 2018 for sure. But nobody ever writes anything anymore, so I guess it's not going to be a problem. And yeah, we're back. We are doing news on a Wednesday. First day back. And I feel like the reason why we have to do that is because um, there is some stuff that happened while we were gone. We haven't had a news show in a few weeks. A few things happen. Some of them are a big deal. Some of them are not. But And some of them are already kind of old. But, you know, we try to cover a little bit of everything if we possibly can. We try. So, I am joined today by the lovely chat. Welcome, chat. Welcome back. We've been chatting for a little while with chat uh, about what's been happening in uh, uh, over the past, what people did over the, over the holidays. And of course, what the fuck a magic roundabout is. I just learned about that. I'm still recovering from that. It's just wild. Swin- what is it? Swindon? Like Tilda Swindon? 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 Swindon. Wherever it is. It's like seven. It's seven round. To all, to all of you guys who are like, who are, who are not used to, basically if you're American, uh, a roundabout is already a foreign concept. Imagine seven of them. Uh, they should make, they should, they should really make like an indie game with like, or not an indie game. They should put like in a game, uh, like a racing game, like Forza, they should have like, not just a roundabout, but like the, the magic roundabout. That would be a great addition to a game. Watch people just freak out over it. It'd be an easy thing to just kind of work into their layout and then let the internet just like freak out over it. And it's, it's, it'd be perfect. It's a perfect way to get some easy views, right? It's like you basically put it in your game. Uh, everybody that's that's American will freak out over it and make videos of them fucking it up because we will. Uh, and then they'll uh, and then the, all the responses will be all the Europeans would be like, oh, you silly Americans and your imperial whatever bullshit. Uh, and so that'll be. You know that, and the, just the, the 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 circle jerk will continue forever. So it's because it really is. It really is hard. driving in a circle too hard for U.S. citizens. NASCAR jokes. <laughs> All right. So first up, Blizzard's trying to clean up Twitch chat. Let's talk about chat. Chat, shall we? Let's go. Let's see. Uh, so first up, we do have an article here that popped up about Blizzard trying to uh, clean up chat. By forcing you to link, not forcing you, but, but uh, well, requiring you to link your Battle.net accounts uh, during certain um, events, Overwatch-related events. This is something that initially popped up, and it got a whole bunch of, uh, it, it basically got a whole bunch of news, bunch of headlines, just basically saying, you know, it's like, oh my god, Twitch is trying, or Blizzard is trying to, like, take over Twitch chat and all that stuff, like, get out of my Twitch chat, or whatever. Uh, personally... I don't think it's that big of a deal. I don't think it's the problem, honestly. The the, the my solution is simply not to watch. It's just just don't even just yeah just, yeah. Control on the internet has never worked exactly. Control on the internet does not work. I mean this this is one of those things where it's like well it's not going to solve the problem. But then the retort to that is well if it's not going to solve the problem, but at least it might mitigate it. Then why not do it? And it's like okay cool that's sure why not. But the whole like why not do it is be- it's basically just kind of like well we couldn't think of anything better <laughs> to actually solve the issues so this is what you get and so that's it. Uh, personally, I feel like this is yeah Twitch chat does get pretty fucking wild, especially here with these guys. Wow, watch out! Uh, but no, Twitch chat can get pretty wild to the point to where it's like completely unwatchable. Even I was watching. Uh, um, uh, Starcraft, the Starcraft uh, series, uh, just what like a month, last month, it wrapped up last month actually, and this is like Starcraft one. So I didn't think that it was actually going to be that busy, and it was still pretty busy. And so it's like Starcraft one was getting enough of a Twitch chat, you know, flow where Twitch chat was basically unusable for me. Um, you just basically you know collapse the whole side and just leave it alone. Anything bigger than that is going to be a mess. Go to like any streamer that is that has like you know. Maybe 3,000 live viewers. It's just a fucking meme, just a shit posting memes all over the place. That's it. Um, take, take whatever, like just all kinds of random emotes all over the place. And that's, that's the problem is that it's just basically, uh, you're completely inundated with, uh, with just random shit. Uh, and so Blizzard's attempt here to, uh, to mitigate that by having you link your Battle.net accounts, basically saying, 
we know who you are, so we're going to ban you or do something or whatever to help, you know, if you if you're bad or whatever. Um, I don't necessarily feel like that's that's the solution. Sam, I just I just turned off alerts, but that's a two year, 24 month. Thank you so much. I owe you dinner. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Sam. Um, personally, what I think the problem is the fact that there's too many fucking people in one room. Uh, Olivia D. Grace. You guys remember her? Olivia D. Grace uh, actually was the person who uh, who led the project to add rooms to Twitch chat. And initially, I think a lot of us were like, you know, okay, yeah, maybe get some use, you know, especially on larger channels. You know, you have like a, you have a moderator chat, you have a bunch of other stuff, so it could have like some use here and there. But it didn't really feel like it was something that could get a ton of use. Uh, you, you couldn't really necessarily get a ton of use out of it. But now, looking at, like, they're trying to find reason, it, ways to resolve these issues uh, with, like, large chats. I feel like maybe the rooms thing is a good idea. But think of it in a way of, like, like the old AOL days where you would have, like, you know, um, W4M room number one, room number two, room number three, right? Because, like, if a room got full, then you'd need to have another one, like an overflow. But it was limited to how many people you could have per room. And so that was, that, that, that was a good way to kind of keep the flow of traffic down. And so when you watch these events, when you're watching these events, uh, it's almost like, what if there was a way to, oh man, where's, yes, holy shit, yes. <laughs> we never did that stuff. But yeah, where's, that was totally, that was totally a thing. Uh, for Max, it was files, actually. It was the same, uh, F-I-L-E-Z, because, you know, Macs were different. And there's only, like, three things you could download. Because there was only three things available for Mac back in the 90s. Uh, <laughs> but no, anyway, so so being able to limit that would actually have a better, I think, feel. Where it's like, if you go into chat, and it's like, well, now you're just kind of put into, like, a random room. Right? And that room only has, like, 100 people in it. Well, suddenly you could kind of create like your own like micro community within that within that thing. Is that you could hop in, you like, what up, dudes? And like someone might say, hey, what up, whatever. And then you could just basically ship posts along with those people uh, or have a discussion or whatever. That is the use for rooms that I could see helping resolve some of these, you know, issues. I don't know if I don't know if linking your Battle.net accounts does anything other than give Blizzard information on what what you're watching. That's all. I think that's all. The only thing, the only benefit here is to Blizzard, they get to know what you're watching. And I guess on the flip side, uh, Amazon gets to know, Twitch and Amazon gets to know like what you're playing or how often you're playing or what you're doing, whatever. They already know all that shit anyway. So really, I don't know if there's anything gained there. But trouble is, you feel like your chat is not going to be seen by the streamer. So Martha, this is more for like events. Sorry, I should have, I should have made that clear. This is because Blizzard's trying to clean up events, event chat. Uh... And I feel like this is something that will help with that. You're right. In, in the case of, you know, just Twitch chat in general, you're not going to be seen by, uh, you know, by the streamer if, if it's, uh, uh, if it's used in that case. So that's, that's something, that's a whole nother issue they're going to have to solve. But, but, you know, in the, in the case of like large events, like esports events, obviously, uh, then that's something that might, might help. Um, I feel it's very distracting that the camera's up here and my, 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 my backup monitor is like on the ground over here. It's like, I feel like I'm like looking at you guys all the way down here. And then, uh, so pardon me. I lost, I, lo I lost my big monitor uh, in the great, in the great power outage of 2018 at 1140 at night. Rip, rip that thing. Uh, so now we're on a backup. So little guy right over here is doing work. Don't you talk down to us. I have to, I have to. You're all the way down there. <laughs> Just fucking point out there. Uh, I afraid it's a better option than, uh, I miss it, uh, than requiring subs to chat, but there are so many negative potential outcomes from this change. So tell me a little bit about what do you think the negative outcomes are for, for this era and or anybody else? Because personally, I just feel like it's a non-issue. I feel like it's, I mean, I don't watch a lot of Overwatch streams, so I don't feel like linking the accounts is really going to have a negative or a positive outlook. I think it, it, if they think it's going to slow down chat, I think they're wrong. <laughs> I think they're quite wrong. <laughs> I think it's going to continue to be, uh, you know, unusable. But I mean, yeah, it could it could help, you know, clean up a little bit of, I guess, you know, vitriol and jokes or every time, a, every time, a you know, a, a caster or a player that, that comes on stage that happens to be black. And suddenly we have like, you know, the 
uh, emotes all over the place. Like that kind of shit I've seen all, uh, happen. So maybe that will be cut back a little bit, which would be nice. But I don't think it's going to stop it, um, which is fine. And, you know, again, you don't have to have like an all in one solution to stop everything. Um, but mm, Blizzard pulls a Patreon. Oh, man. Oh, get shut to say using to hide uh, clean up or hide criticism. All that criticism was on Reddit and Twitter and streamer chat. It works for events, and it's the precedent for expanding it further. Blizzard and Activision have not earned my trust to let me give them access to my account details linked. Well, I feel like they already have access to all of that stuff. I get what you're saying, but I feel like they already have access to majority of the information. They're share I, I, yeah, maybe by linking it, you're kind of allowing them to share the information. But I don't even know if it's really that many people they're going to link their accounts. Like, how many people... Like what? What are the actual Overwatch numbers? How many people watch an Overwatch stream? Like an actual Overwatch event? Is it a lot? I didn't watch any any of Owl at all, um, but I felt like everybody else was, and so I don't really know if that's if that's something that is going to make a huge impact on uh, on these things on these people. You haven't watched a single event, yeah? Watch zero, open it for rewards, probably a few. There you go. I did it for points and skins. Okay, so that's why everyone's watching. There you go. Uh, who is moderating their Twitch chats and how good uh, are they at moderation? When it's going by that fast, I don't understand how you're supposed to moderate it. And there's a point in chatting and reading chat for uh, the events when I watched League several years ago. Uh, like I said, it's always hide and forget it. Yeah, exactly. Hide and forget it. Yep. Uh, who elected Blizzard to be my moral police? <laughs> Everybody is your moral police now. That's the way it works. Everybody. Everybody else is your moral police officer. Your more, like, moral probation officer is what it is, actually, now. Um, so... <laughs> have you not read 1984 yes you did actually you pushed me to read it and now i'm like forget, freaking out every time i see a screen in a room if i could tell a screen what watch what i'm saying mr smith number 5879 please put some more stank on it oh my god they're watching me uh they actually have those with the workout machines you guys see that like they have the workout machines where actually the people can like like see you and they could tell you you know they could basically tell you it's like oh yeah hey so and so like like you know how you doing work a little bit harder or whatever when you're working out like that's, that's a real thing. That's a real thing that they do. It's a, it's a paid service. You have to actually pay into it. It's like a subscription service, but it, but it really is a thing that, that people, people pay for <laughs> people pay to do, uh, to have somebody else. And it's very, it's very Orwellian. Yes, it is. Uh, I, I understood the, the concept of Orwellian before I read 1984, but now that I've read, it, I definitely have a much better, uh, more immersive, uh, um, understanding of, of it overall. Why the fuck would you pay for that? Well, it, I think people just are looking for people look for ways uh, and reasons to to basically get um, to get back into shape. They look for excuses, you know. Oh, I need to do this in order for me to accomplish this. Like it's it's just a thing, and I do the same thing. It's like in order for me to 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 get into shape, I have to have this. Right. And that's going to be my, my, my totem. That's going to be the thing that changes my life that, that I, I will latch on to. And that's going to help me lose all this weight that I want to lose. Not, not my mo own personal motivation uh, or anything like that. Not any of that. No, 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 no. I need to pay somebody to yell at me to, to do better, which honestly, after I got out of basic training, I was, or I actually got out of the military in general. I was like, man, like, I really miss being yelled at to do stuff because then I could just basically be like, it was a reactionary thing. And someone's like, you know, when you're doing pushups and they're like, zero, zero, zero. And you're like, man, I can fuck it. I'm doing zero pushups here this whole time. Like, and you miss that. You need that kind of motivation, that encouragement. Yeah, it's encouragement. Uh, and some people need that. So yeah, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. Some people might be into that. I mean, I, I saw it and I was kind of like, hey, is there a drill sergeant option? Like, give me someone with a huge brim, like an oversized brim. That just fucking like it comes through the maybe I can mount like a one like I could just hit a button, it just bumps in my fucking forehead every time it wants to yell at me. God, I miss that stuff. Uh the the weird, the strangest things you miss when you're out of the military. Uh no, not that kind of brim era. What the hell? All right, so <laughs> get Sheriff Eli to yell at you. Yeah, he's perfect. Sheriff Eli, yeah, 100 uh, percent Next up in Activision Blizzard News. Um, you guys heard this one. This was actually very recent. Yesterday or something? Yesterday, I think. Uh, Activision set to fire CFO for mysterious undeclared cause. Nobody knows why. What happened? Why are they why are they firing this guy? It must be because, and this is this is straight out of R slash Diablo, okay? Uh maybe some changes are coming down the pipe for Diablo. What? What? No! That's not what happened. No. Stupid. <laughs> you know, 
you don't fire the CFO, the CFO, the guy, the guy who does the numbers, you know, like what is, what does he have to do with this? Thing? Oh, maybe now Diablo 4 is coming guys. It's fine. We got rid of the CFO. Yes. Diablo Immortal is ruined now. The CFO is out. See you later. Yeah, weird. Uh, but so it, they, at the time, and this is funny because this is like what 10:55 a.m. Right? And they said they they don't know undeclared. They basically put the guy on leave, paid leave. But they told him, "Hey, we're putting you on paid leave, but we're gonna fire you. Just so you know, we're gonna fire." You. That's the way it works when you when you're like when you get up there in the ranks. You know, they they basically let you go. For like a couple months paying you but they say you know at the end of this we're probably not gonna bring you back so you know just take your time and you can find something else um and so they let him go he says this did not help the company's 26 26 percent total share loss over the past year uh and it's funny because yeah, cnbc reports the share price for activision blizzard dropped one percent one percent over after the news became public of the company's plans man holy shit one percent on top of that 26 percent uh, I don't necessarily feel like this had anything to do with this. So I decided to go to CNBC. This is the, within the same hour that I, that I read this article here, right? Uh, to see like what, what the fuss was about. And I find this. Netflix hires Spencer Newman from Activision Blizzard as new CFO. Oh, okay. So he just basically got a new job. Look at his face. Look at his fucking face. He fucking knows. He's all like, you bitches. Fucking fired me. Get the fuck out of here. Like he's seriously, he does got some big ears. I can relate though. Like they really, really are. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's it. He, he just fucking, he just, he left. He left, he, he, he found another job, they sniped him. That's all it is, it's sniping, right? They poached him, actually, that's the appropriate term. Poach, sorry, not snipe. Um, they poached him. They probably pay him a fat fucking check. He, uh, he gets, uh, I guess he's cute. Okay, I guess he's cute. He's big ears, is that a thing? Um, but, you know, he, uh, yeah, corporate poaching 101, exactly. This, is, this, this happens corporate level all the way down. Like, when you work in tech, especially work in tech, you know, you, if you are an asset to somebody else and they will, they will pay to poach you. I mean, it, it happened, it happened a lot when, when, uh, uh, when, when my wife and I are working together at the, you know, if it was like phone sex and, and, uh, and psychics, uh, they split the company, but we were still like, uh, you know, we were still kind of joined because our employees were all like shared or whatever. And they split everybody off, uh, and they started basically like coming over and like poaching you know, poaching uh, people that they liked from us. And so they, that's, that's the way it works. You know, they basically come in and they just, they say, hey, you know, we'll hire you for you know, X amount, whatever. And that's pretty much it. So, so uh, this was posted, was it, it says six hours ago. Okay, so updated one hour ago, six hours ago. So this other one was, uh, when was this one posted? Yesterday, yesterday, and then the next day. This, actually, this news was actually posted uh, earlier than this. This is just the most recent article that I found. Uh, but yeah, they basically hired him. And uh, this is early reports of Newman's new role circulated just hours later. A person familiar with this transition told CNBC that Newman's termination was a result of him pursuing another job. So that's pretty much it. So... He was, he was basically done with uh, CFOing for uh, Activision Blizzard and decided to go find something else and and uh, probably secured it. He probably secured a deal with them, was like, hey, all right, cool. So I'll quit here and uh, I'll come over. You guys will pay me X amount of dollars and that'll be pretty much it. And then, then they found out and they're like, well, we have to put you on administrative leave because they can't have him handling the financials of one company while he's onboarding on another. So... They basically let him go. So he has a replacement that's coming up. I don't know anything about who the replacement is or anything. It's probably not anybody we know. Usually when you get into the um usually when you when you get into the the financial side of of corporate businesses, like it's it's not it's it's not like they didn't come from like the gaming side, the actual like develop side or the design side. Uh usually it's a completely different like kind of uh, it's almost like its own circle and a Venn diagram here that basically kind of overlaps and shares with different companies. So it didn't necessarily come organically from the you know, the game developer side. Uh, usually there, and this is the same thing for like HR as well. Like HR is kind of like that as well. Like they basically, if you're HR for one company, you could be HR for basically any company. You, know, you don't necessarily need to know what the other side's doing. You just need to know how to manage the human human resources aspect of it. And it's the same thing for like CFOs. So so this is something that, you know, honestly, it's a non-issue. But really, ultimately, I can't really see this being an issue. I mean, yeah, you can say uh, that he saw the writing on the walls. Activision usually is very unreasonable, uh, lofty financial goals. Uh, I mean, we could speculate that that could be the case. And at the same time, we could also speculate that they, uh, uh, that Netflix has had a better deal waiting for him. Netflix is doing... You know, well, on, on on the surface, it feels like Netflix is doing pretty good. It's a sign of Diablo. I know, I know. Diablo 4, yes. Oh, we finally got rid of the CFO. Now we can finally get Diablo 4. God, I've been waiting for Diablo 4. <laughs> this guy was holding us back the whole time. Man. 
Ah, <sighs> let's see what's next. This is, I told you, it's not a lot of news. We're burning through it pretty quickly. You know why? Because a lot of stuff that came out was like big headlines. It was like, oh, well, this actually doesn't mean anything. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let's cover something small. Something small. Let's see. Uh, by small, I mean small and also kind of interesting. Ars actually did a pretty good uh, Ars technique. Ever seen Ars? Like, um, so his ears blocked the plants with Diablo 4. So people forgot about it. That's what it was. <sighs> All right. So are you guys familiar with Star Control? I, I, do I have that game? I wonder. Do I have that game? Let me see. Steam. Let me open up Steam. Curious. Steam. Let me see, Star Control, or I do, yeah, Star Control Origins, oh, cool. All right, you know, we could probably, uh, we could probably uh, open this up here. Let me see, let me go to news here. We probably read the news straight from this. Do, 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 do. All right, cool. This is going to be an inter interesting way to do the news piece here. Uh, let's see. So we're going to do the news right from Steam Store because this is where it's at. You cannot get this game right now, by the way. Star Control, I played it on stream. Oh, I did. Uh, oh, I did! Yes, I remember. I, I do remember this. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, there's so much. How many games do I have that start with Star? Like, really? Like, a lot. I don't remember all of them. Uh, so, Star Control has been removed to... Fuck off. I have a lot more than that. Do I have more than that? I think I do. Uh, Star Control Origins has been removed. You can't actually buy this game right now. DMCA takedown of the entire game. By who? By the, uh, I guess the original creators, we could call them, we could call them the original creators, because the article calls it is the original creators. Um, so there's a couple articles here that have been basically placed into the queue here, so you could go and read. It says, the designers of the 1990 MS-DOS game Star Control have issued a DMCA takedown notice against Star Control's origins, Star Doc's RPG reboot of the series. The game has been removed from Steam, and Star Doc, Star Doc expects it will be removed from GOG 2. So this is, this is, this is, like, I mean, kind of a big deal, because, like, Especially if you play the game, right? It's it, it's interesting to see like, what happens because Star Doc acquired the rights to the game legally. They bought it from Atari like ten years ago or something, or maybe it was Sega. They bought it from I think it was Atari. Um, they bought the rights like ten years ago, and then they made and released Star Control Origins, and then they were uh, and then simultaneously. The original designers, and I don't know what kind of a hand these original designers had in the original MS-DOS game, um, but they worked on the game. We know that much. Uh, one and two, I should say. So original games, Star Control 1, Star Control 2. Um, they announced that they had their own game, Star, Star Control 3, that they were going to release. So when Stardock saw this, they were like, you know, hold on a second. Like we we own we we own the rights to this. Uh, we should we're we're the, we bought it. We should be the ones to uh, to uh, you have we have control over this. We should be able to do all this stuff, whatever. And so they they issued a um, they basically filed a lawsuit against the original creators, and that basically started this this fucking volley of lawsuits between the two. Uh, Atari never owned the assets or objects or anything like the value, so Stardock's purchase was meaningless. See, I didn't I didn't read that that was an issue. Uh, I read that everybody agrees that they acquired the, the rights legally. But and this is the thing, if I feel like if you agree they acquired it legally, then that's there shouldn't be a but there. But there's still a dispute over whether or not the original developers own it. Like if they ever sold the first place, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, Stardock, Stardock actually is a software company, uh, or I guess whatever that uh, they make. Uh, they did the Windows Seven menu like mod that you could install if you have Windows Ten. If you want the old Windows Seven style menu, uh, yeah, because I actually I used to use that, and I actually right now I actually use another piece of software that actually allows me to uh, um, dock Windows into each other, which is actually pretty slick. Uh, anyway, so that's a whole other thing. So. Original Star, Star Control creators deploy nuclear option against Star Dock. Woo, man. So this is actually, if you have an opportunity, please go and read this shortest recap that I can give. It'll be in the, uh, it'll be down below. It's, it is, it's pretty long for a short recap, but it really is the shortest recap that you could give. Basically, the original developers announced they're going to re release the game after Star Dock already at releases uh, 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 Origins. They're like, what the fuck are you doing? We're going to go ahead and put a, a file suit against you guys because you guys don't have the rights. 
And then they turn around and then so they basically tie up their assets, I guess. And then Star Control, the original Star Control devs, they turn around and uh, DMCA take down the game. So now Stardock's not making any money off this. And so it just became this huge thing. So much so that even the uh, even the uh, uh, the judge is like, you guys need to stop fucking around with all this paperwork and just <laughs> like... Just, just we didn't work this out. Like it, it just basically feels like they're just trying so hard to just, um, to just bury each other in paperwork. And that's pretty much it. You get sued. You, everybody gets sued. Yeah, that's basically what it is. it's a huge. Yeah, that's that's their way to promote the uh, the game, right? Is by basically uh, uh, dropping this uh, the, all this uh, all this shit on each other. Uh, but yeah, it even says uh, Armstrong peppered the decision with a number of over jabs at Stardock. Stardock hinting that she she being the judge uh, likely believes many of Stardock's foundational legal arguments are somewhat or totally suspicious. Um, one particularly pointed footnote reads, and I'm not gonna read this whole thing, but basically just pointing out that there's, um, it's the American dream. Yes, just, just, they need to get their shit together. Uh, and so the takedown has been deployed. The game has been yanked. So the game is no longer available. This is something that is obviously developing. So I guess we'll be able to check on this later. Uh, the last time, the last time we had this issue was, I don't remember, I don't remember the game or the name. Was this? something heroin like hero but female um oh man i want to say it was star stargazer star something anyways the original um the person who made the music for this game and you guys my co-host here will be able to uh, uh name it for me in a minute but the uh the original composer for the music for this game basically came out and said hey you guys own the rights to the music because you never did blank whatever it was um, it turns out that actually it was a, uh, that I don't actually, I don't remember what the outcome was, but it turns out that, sh that she was very militant in, in, in a lot of things. And it almost kind of came off as like, does she really not have the rights to this? Or is she just looking for money? Or is she just like, we didn't I don't know what the final outcome was that Alex Maurer. There we go. Uh, it was a huge thing. She was, yeah, not exactly saying, thank you. It was, it was, it was a thing. I don't want to say she was crazy because there's, there's like a, there's a, yeah, there's there's some overtones there, but but what I will say is that she was not she definitely seemed like she was not exactly sane. Um, but anyways, that like put a huge stop and and, and caused a whole bunch of issues with uh, with uh, with that game. So uh, Atari and Star Control creators had an agreement that was very favorable to the creators and allowed them to keep almost everything. So Starduck paid four hundred thousand dollars for basically nothing. Also, should note that Star Control Origins does not have any any assets or anything related to the original games. It's a whole another a whole new universe, a whole new everything. And so this is this does feel like a very frivolous back and forth where they're just they're just basically I mean I don't just being fucking idiots really is what it is. And both sides, both sides are to blame here, you know? Like they're both going after each other for 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 things that really ultimately it should just be like like this just fucking drop. But you know, Stardock did buy the rights, but the guys are the releases Stardock three or Star Star Control three, so some kind of resolution needs to happen. Just need to figure out what. Um, yeah, that's why I said yeah, I said dark uh, earlier is that Stardock when when they when they originally announced that they're gonna they're gonna make Star Star Control three. That's when Stardock man the fact that they're both things Stardock Star Control is really fucking me up. But Star Control they announced that they're doing Star Control three, so Stardock went after them initially, and that basically started the whole you know, war of all these, uh, yeah, all, all this, uh, back and forth with all this shit. So, so that's something that I guess we'll have to watch and see if anything comes of it. It's not, it's not as, it's not as big a deal as the whole Alex Maurer thing, because like the, Alec, I think the Alex Maurer fiasco was fueled by her personality. I feel like her personality really kind of blew this whole thing up because she was very active on Twitter. And I feel like because because of that, you know, you, she generated a lot of support through there. She also also generated a whole lot of um, uh, a whole lot of friction there. But because she was DMCA takedown requesting videos. Yeah, because she said she owned the rights to all the music. And so and the, and, and the game developer was saying, no, you signed over all the rights to everything. Like she also. Yeah, she attacked everybody. Yeah. So it was that that really. Because this doesn't have, I guess, an Alex Maurer equivalent, then this is something that actually may not get 
very much of a uh, uh, attraction, social, like you know, on social networks and whatnot. But it is something that's worth mentioning because it is. Inter- I'm curious to see like, what ends up happening here in the next, you know, you know, few months or years or whatever. Once these guys still the dust settled, uh, Stardock has set up a direct purchase option for Star Control Origins, and it's on sale for fifty percent off on their site. Oh, there you go. That's that's one way to do it. That's perfect. I I seem to recall really liking the game though. You guys will probably remember more than I do, but uh, yeah, I'm fairly sorry. I actually, I'm starting to put it together now. I'm fairly certain that I did do coverage on it, or we did stream it, and I really did enjoy it. So, 50% off sounds like a good deal. <laughs> They're all throwing papers at each other, so someone should start using scissors to win this. God, there you go, Red. Yes. All right. <laughs> so, what else? What else happened while I was gone? Man. Well, New Year's happened while I was gone. That was, that was a whole big, that was a big old mess, wasn't it? That was a huge mess. Like, oh man, that whole thing was just like, there was so much. T- <laughs> uh, so let's talk about New Year's Eve. Let's talk about New Year's Eve when you're ninja, okay? So you guys know what ninja is, right? He, he like streams like Fortnite or whatever, sometimes. <sighs> he, he's got like purple hair or red hair. You know, one of those guys. So. I'm taking turns drinking different drinks for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. I'm getting ready to read this thing. So, before, before blue hair, you say blue hair. You sure? You sure? You sure about that? You sure? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We might be talking about someone different. I think we're talking about someone different right back. (laughs) You don't watch Ninja every day? Come on. Uh, Did you say New Year's Day? What what, can we just do? Wait, New Year's Eve countdown from Australia? Oh, no, I did not see that. That's got to be it. That's, can you imagine missing it? Like, waiting, like, doing the countdown too soon or too late? Like, 10, 9, Happy New Oh, what the fuck? Uh, anyway, so, um, leading up to this event that Ninja was hosting, a uh, New Year's Eve event in New York City, um, being streamed to, to his channel, to, uh, to uh, uh, twitch.tv slash ninja, um, as a, uh, as a takeover sponsorship. So basically they, yeah, they hashtag add the entire channel and then they hashtag add everybody else's channel to promote this event. And so this caused a lot of issues with a lot of, uh, with a lot of streamers because they were like, why are we advertising somebody else's channel on our channel? So this, this is, this is. This is kind of a weird gray area, I guess, for Twitch. Ish. So, I'm looking at the side over here on this article, and it says PewDiePie versus T-Series live real-time YouTube subscriber counts. I kind of want to watch that. Just cut the show together and just go and watch that for the next couple hours. Anyway, so, um, you are not allowed to advertise your channel on somebody else's channel. You're just not allowed to do that as a streamer. As a business, you are allowed to advertise on somebody else's channel. Not often do you advertise somebody else's channel on a channel as a business. Doesn't happen very often. But as streamers get bigger and bigger, we're going to start seeing this happen more often. If you have been on YouTube any time in the past several years, you know that this has happened before. We used to have ads for other uh, YouTube channels on our on our on our YouTube channels, like on my YouTube channel. I would have an advertisement for uh, uh, for not for PewDiePie, <laughs> obviously not. <laughs> uh, Filter Franco, actually, I think I had ads for him. Uh, I had ad for like some foodie network thing or whatever. It was like some vlog or some shit. Uh, and it was just, it's just, it's just one of those things. It's like, it was something that happened then. And it's funny because now Twitch later is finally catching up to the same issues that YouTube is running into because they can't decide whether or not to cut off a channel from being a channel for advertising once they get beyond a certain point. So Ninja's channel is big enough that they treat it as a business. And so that's why it's okay for them to advertise them on somebody else's channel. Uh, Justin Wong, who used to be my absolute favorite shit poster, and he still is. He used to work for Twitch. Uh, he was the esports. Uh, actually, it's in his profile. Uh, you see, ex ex partnerships for esports and community social influencer marketing teams. Whatever. 
So basically, he was one of the like original Twitch guys, um, and he he got let go because you know he, basically the company outgrew him, and then they basically let a bunch of people uh, let a bunch of the old the old guard off, right? They laid them off, and that was pretty much it. That was a while ago. Uh, anyways, he's he is really fucking smart. Um, and I highly recommend going through and reading this entire thing if you have the time. Uh, but he basically goes through and he talks a little bit about the backlash to Twitch's Ninja New New Year's Eve ads channels, blah, 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 blah. So this is where he basically goes through with a little bit more detail. And this is somebody who, who, you know, who has insider information because this was his job. Uh, and he basically talks about how channels are getting to the point where they are, where, they're superseding the 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 whole. It's not. It's no longer a streamer. Now it's a business. So that means they could buy ads like a business because it's an event. It's not a streamer. It's an event. Uh, and so if it's an event and not a streamer, then it's okay. And so instead of saying, "Well, there's going to be community backlash," it's like, "Well, fuck that. Who cares?" Because it's a business. Like your community backlash isn't going to make a difference if you know Bounty is is advertising on your channel. You know, like it's just not. It's just not going to really make that much of a difference is that and they're treating this the same way so this is actually probably the absolute best write-up you could read on this whole thing and again i highly recommend that you go through and read it it's it's a, it's a more detailed breakdown of what i just said really uh by the way thanks cliff for the uh, thing and congratulations on your uh on your click commander clip commander uh so this is right here if you're a brand it's more efficient to tap into the existing mechanism by dual streaming the event on the streamer's channel and yours you get better overall viewership fortnite does this with their tournaments and it was a core strategy for mlg tv so he goes and gives examples of everything so if your event doesn't doesn't intend to sell ads on consolidated channels this is a win for all your brand gets more exposure streamers get a boost from all the cross promotion viewers don't have to switch channels and new viewers land on channels optimized for retention uh, and then, da, 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 da. and he actually, this is a good point too. It says channel switching is a bigger deal than most people realize. All the hours spent building in jokes, commemorating them with chat emotes evaporate when a long time viewer goes to an event channel and can't even talk because their sub doesn't work. It's no longer their community. This is true. This is actually a big deal. Even right here, uh, in, in our own channel, like, you know, it's like, it's a thing. Like we have all the, our own like inside jokes and emotes and all that shit to reflect all that stuff. And so like, whenever you go somewhere else, they don't necessarily work. That's why some of us try to come up with emotes that are, that work in multiple channels you know it's like the save icon that we have here the save icon is 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 yeah, the wet the poop the cat yeah sure like these are things that are relatively universal uh, universal can we say that it's universal but it's versatile <gasps> and universal at the same time i think we can say that uh so anyway so yeah it says by the way and this is important to note this is important to note uh point zero seven five it's dead it's dead. Uh, Ninja's innocent in all this. He didn't buy those ads. It's Twitch's fault. They let this fester for as long as they have another consistently common criticism. He could say this shit now because he's not, he doesn't work there anymore. Uh, but yeah, this, 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 this is probably one of my favorite, like, Twitch staff, I guess now ex Twitch staff to follow because one, he's pretty hilarious. And two, he's really fucking smart when it comes to shit. He's been dealing with this kind of stuff personally personally so he knows what he's talking about um but it also shows that you know like what you know twitch is gonna have to draw the line somewhere it's like ah eh, well we're gonna advertise because this channel is so big we're gonna advertise them everywhere else so it's like if g fuel decided to run uh dr disrespect ads all over the place then i guess they could do that because dr disrespect is big enough to uh to basically have this takeover event or whatever whatever they, they might be doing so so I disagree. I disagree that it's Ninja's fault. He allowed it to happen. He even defended it in a tweet that he deleted almost immediately. Well, we probably got some backlash than that, but, but I mean, I'll be honest, guys. I'll be honest. If I was as big as Ninja and I was getting paid as much as he was getting paid for that New Year's Eve event, which is probably a lot of fucking money, more than I probably make in a year. Uh, yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run ads. I'm gonna run ads, dude. It's, it's just what it is. I'm sorry, I'm running ads. I gotta run ads. I gotta do my thing. I gotta do my thing. But here's the thing, though. That here's the difference is that if if I got that big and you guys were still around, like let's say I didn't like you know like wasn't like a turn into a total egotistical dick, right? Uh, not saying that Ninja is. I'm just saying like let's say I didn't and you guys still hung around. You guys would be like, fuck yeah, some more people from Mike B. You guys would probably be supporting this whole thing. At least I hope so. And so that's the difference. It's like, you know, we're looking at this from the perspective of like, I'm not a fan of Ninja. I don't watch his stuff. You know, fuck him for putting ads on my stuff, right? But if it was a flip side, if it was me putting ads on things because I have a huge event that we're trying to get out and maybe I'm partnering with a huge company or whatever and they're going to take over my channel and do all this stuff, you guys might be like, oh yeah, yeah, it's, 
You gotta get the word out, you know? Part of that tweet that pissed people off is he acted like, I haven't seen this tweet, by the way, that, like, his event stream was going to help everyone else, and they should be happy they're doing it. Oh, oh, okay. So I, I didn't know that, but he deleted it, so maybe when he wrote it, he was like, ah, you know, that sounds like quite an asshole thing to say. There's probably a better way of saying that. More on deleted tweets later, as we get to uh, the, the last article in our, uh, in our news piece here today. <laughs> so so yeah uh then there are thousands when there are thousands of supporters i doubt you'll remember any of us i'm pretty good with names i'm really good with names until you change your name in which case i won't remember you but yeah i'm pretty good with names even if it got super huge i think i'd probably remember that. i remember that i'm pretty good with that yeah except for uh what's that guy's name yeah it's over him so uh let's see next up is the actual event the actual event. Oh, man. So, the actual event happened. So, I didn't know this is what it was. I, he I heard about the advertising and all that shit, and I was like, oh, so he's got, like, he's got, like, an event going on? Like, he's gonna do a New Year's Eve stream? I Seriously, I I as naive as I am, I was like, oh, he's gonna, <laughs> he's, gonna he's gonna, he's gonna stream on New Year's Eve. Oh, that's cool. He's gonna play, like, Fortnite until midnight or some shit, you know? Uh, no, no, actually, he, he really is going to New Year's. Uh, at uh, uh, New Year's Eve at uh, on on uh, you know, Times Square. I think they're not in Times Square. I think they're a little off Times. Are they? Oh, well, it does say he's from the center of Times Square, New York. Wow, Jesus Christ! This should have been. You should have looked at this and said, "Yeah, this is not going to work. This is not going to work." Like, really. First off, you're not going to impress a crowd full of 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 uh, uh, New Yorkers. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to impress a crowd full of New Yorkers. New Yorkers are born and bred to not be impressed by anything, okay? Their, their initial inclination to everything is, eh, right? That's, they're, they're already kind of like leaning that side. And then it fucking rains. Yeah, exactly. And then it's raining and it's cold, you know? And it's fucking miserable. They're just like waiting for the ball to drop so they could leave. And then you have this asshole with red hair up there trying to get people to, now I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it, right? Hold on. Because you had to see it. You had to see it. And three, two, two one. one. Yeah. Hold up, hold up. Come on, baby. If you guys know what? Come on, man. I want to see the crowd. Get it going. You got it? You've been working. I'm like, hit my wife for you. Wait, you want to come up? Everyone wants to get it. Come on, baby. Show me yeah. what you got. Show me what. Just move. If you guys know what, just move. It's all I want to see some movement. I'm not seeing enough movement. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these fucking faces, man. They don't want nothing to do with this. They want nothing to do with this. Now listen, listen, man. I feel bad. For, I feel bad for Ninja. He tried, okay? He fucking tried. You, but you shouldn't have even tried. They shouldn't even be there. They shouldn't have even fucking been there. Like, why are they there? These people don't give a fuck about Fortnite. Their kids play Fortnite. They're not, they're, all these people out here, all these fucking New Yorkers, they don't give a shit about Fortnite or fucking flossing. Their kids and nephews and friends' kids do that shit. That's it. They don't care about that. And then here's, then here he is. And, and, and so, I mean, he did, he did take it with like, he, he, he did take it. Well, he said, uh, he says here, he says, where to advice. Don't try to get 1 million New Yorkers to dance in the rain on New Year's Eve. Trust me. So he, he kind of rolled with it. Yeah. They have that. What the fuck look. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and he says it again here. It's a little clips. Pretty funny. Out there, you don't want to be out there. Um, it's bad dude. I'm gonna pass. It's freezing. What? Have, you ever, pass. have you ever tried to get a million people to floss, freezing their butts off, their I, hands off? I can't pockets? say that I have. Yeah, well, good. I can't say guess I've what? Ever I haven't tried either. Uh, you so, tried. It's a thought that counts. So yeah, it's a thought that counts. So, oh, hey, well, that's a, that's a good Twitch watching there. Uh, so yeah, it's he, he at least, he at least wasn't like, you know, who well, fuck this crowd or whatever, which would be a huge fucking mistake. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. So cringe, just just a whole lot of cringe for sure. It just we don't belong out there. I mean, like as as content creators, 
right? I don't care how big you are. They've seen his face. Sure, they might know him because he's been on the news defending video games or something, right? But they don't, they're not going to fucking floss. Like, there's a huge jump between I've seen you on TV versus I'm going to do your stupid fucking dance while I'm standing in the rain. There's a, there's a, there's a pretty significant, and I'm, I'm squeezing my hands in here because I got a tiny little frame to work with here. But imagine if this frame was much wider. My arms would be way bigger. It's just, uh, it's just not happening. Uh, wait, Vsauce did it perfectly. Camo, uh, wait, ca cameoing on science shows. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, camp. Yeah, exactly. Like, like get get them somewhere where the kids are watching shit. Like, put them on, you know, uh, uh, Disney XD or some shit. Like, there you go. Or uh, or put them in there with um, <sighs> fucking I don't know, <laughs> Muppet Babies. I don't fucking know. Like, it's somewhere where the kids are watching. The kids, the kids know this stuff. You know, Cartoon Network. Thank you, thank you. There you go. That's a good one. Yeah, Cartoon Network, Disney XD. Like, that's where. That's where they need, that's where the money is coming from. Like, if you want to get Ninja's audience, like, you got to get, you got to have the platform that will actually support it. And that platform is not in the middle of Times Square fucking New York City on New Year's Eve while it's raining. That's not the platform for it. So, yeah, that was a, that was, that was a woofty right there. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe that. Woofty. Okay. So, ah, man, what's next? What's next? I have a couple of a couple of tabs here for one single thing. Uh, there is a new Muppet Babies. You, have you guys seen it? It's I mean it's just like old Muppet Babies. It's pretty much the same thing, pretty much. Uh, even the song is pretty damn close. Uh, uh, Ducktales, Ducktales is back too. You guys already knew that, right? It's got uh, what's his face, the old Doctor Who guy uh, slash uh, 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 Jessica Jones uh, bad guy. I can't remember his name, uh, but he's uh, he plays uh, Scrooge McDuck. David Tennant. Thank you so much. Uh, he plays a pretty good Scrooge McDuck. I was actually watching DuckTales, the new DuckTales with uh, Declan the other day. I was laughing my ass off. Declan didn't get half the jokes. But I was fucking loving it. It was dumb. It was dumb. It was, but it was hilarious. It was hilarious. Shut up, Red. You don't like anything. The best doctor. Is he the best doctor still? I don't, I don't, I don't watch the show, but I'm guessing, you know, if, they, if I took my favorite show and like replaced the main character every few years, it'd make me upset, I guess. But, you know. <sighs> so, yep. <laughs> shot down red i red I, I will note i will note your criticism on this notepad on this sticky note i'll put it over here in the trash uh david Tennant was the last doctor and the best dang man man i don't watch enough doctor who to refute any of this stuff i have no idea so next to bj no <laughs> yes yeah right it's the play that's a there you go that's that's why you watch the live stream youtube because you get all the inside jokes uh next up Next up, oh, 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 this is good. This is good. Uh, I feel like just about everybody knows about this. You guys know who Soldier Boy is? I really hope I have to explain this part. Soldier Boy. Uh, computer. Play Soldier Boy. Tell him. What's the name of the song? Shuffling songs by Soldier Boy. Tell him on Amazon Music. Computer, stop. Just never mind. Listen, it's it's the fucking it's it's the fucking Superman stuff. You just you right right. You gonna you know what I'm talking about? Like, you right. It's like but this is dabbing. This is dabbing. This is Superman. Right, Superman. That oh right. Okay oh okay. Crank that crank that soldier boy. I feel like an old man doing like that. Right, but something like that. Anyway, so yeah, so uh, the Goblin Mail. Oh, there it is. The Goblin Mail dance. There you go. So Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy decided that he's going to get in on the market, the tech market. He's got headphones. He's got phones. Phone phones. He's got... Okay, fucking, come on, we hurry up? We don't have time for this shit. You got the Soldier Watch, which is basically the, it's, it's the Apple Watch, pretty much. Like, it's, it's... Uh... Wait, what is this? Basically, when you're about to dab... But you have eaten the taco and it's about to exit. Oh man, maybe yeah. It's a dance. <laughs> yeah, it is the dance that my yeah, Gizmo Duck and Champions Online. That's right, Gizmo Duck did do it in Champions Online back in the day. There you go. Wow, it's two Ducktales references in a row. Uh, so Soldier Boy has a whole bunch of products 
that looks suspiciously like other products that we may have seen, especially this one. Uh, one of them is, um, is weird how Apple doesn't try to sue for anything. Well, we're not done yet. We don't know. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if his phone will support uh, Diablo Immortal, but uh, you know, we'll guess what? We'll wait and see. So he he's basically getting into the tech field or the tech product field where he's going to try. He's trying to basically put out a bunch of products um, and just try to make a comeback, right? For 2018, 2019. Uh, he said you could literally buy all of his products uh, on Amazon for half the price, but can I get, can I get the, uh, uh, uh can I get the, the actual Game Boy thing? <laughs> Whatever it is, I don't know what they're going to call it, but yeah. So right here, Rapper Soldier Boy releases new handheld game console and it looks terrible. That's what the article says. I, I would say it's, you know, it's, maybe it's a, uh, it's a, you know, clickbaity headline, but no, it's true. It lo- does look pretty tight. Ta- why, 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 why you do this? So, Rapper Soldier Boy is diving into video games industry in what could be the worst way possible. Instead of working with an established developer to make a mobile game or lending his voice to a character, Mr. Boy, Mr. Boy, <laughs> is instead releasing a handheld console. Mr. Boy, that's hilarious. Uh, and looks to be about as promising as you'd expect uh, a handheld console for Soldier Boy to look. So, Mr. Boy has his things like the built-in chip retro game. Soldier Boy, Soldier Game is now on sale for some reason. Uh, can you actually buy this thing anywhere? Is this thing? I don't think so. It looks it looks like a Game Boy Micro. It does look like a Game Boy Micro. So it's if you if you so there's tons of these things. Actually, my dad got Declan one of these things where it's like it's bas- it looks just like this but blue, um, and it has a bunch of like old NES games and shit already pre put on it, but they don't necessarily call it that. Like they're kind of like a little bit different or whatever. Uh, oh, you can give him money but never sends it to you. Oh well, there you go. Oh, Sock Draw got something here. Hold on, what is this? Wait, is this the actual product here? Let's see. Uh, oh yeah, there it is. That's that's basically it. And so basically, it took this thing and they rebrand it for uh, for Soldier Boy. A good find. Uh, and it's gonna it's gonna basically come with a whole bunch of games. I guess five hundred seventy three games on one console. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of games coming at him. <sighs> Or co- coming to this is a Neo Geo Game Boy Advance uh, GBC, which is, is that Game Boy Color? I get the yeah, Game Boy Color FC, which is uh, uh, I don't remember what that is. Uh, it's CP1 and MD, which is Mega Drive. Uh, I don't remember all the damn abbreviations, all right? But build, build in 3,000 plus games. Famicom. Oh, okay. Yeah. So NES, basically. Sure. Sure, FC. Thank you, thank you guys. Uh, so, Soldier Soldier Game boasts a meaty three-inch screen. Doesn't have touchscreen controls, and is said to come in black. Although all the pictures depict a white console, the unit looks like the Wii U gamepad, but even has, even that has a uh, had a six-point-two-inch screen. I guess a more appropriate comparison for the Soldier Boy is the Game Boy Micro's two-inch screen. So he actually references Game Boy Micro right here in the article. Uh, even funnier is the fact that it shows how you can hook it up to your TV. Do you guys see anything here that maybe stands out as not current technology? Maybe, maybe something just kind of like just stands right out. <laughs> RCA, exactly. RCA, right channel, left channel, video. <laughs> when when video could come over uh, a twisted a twisted copper cable uh, with no issues whatsoever at a whopping at a whopping four hundred and eighty interlaced lines. Whoa, man, that's fuck. That's oh man, so many lines. A video. It's crazy. Click it right, yeah, right up to your VHS tech, man. Holy shit. Um, but does it do 4K? I actually read somewhere that I guess apparently that, that it was mentioned that it does do 4K for some reason. Uh, or it supports 4K, whatever. Game speed is one-to-one output. Yeah, whatever, whatever. <laughs> one-to-one output, though. So anyways, so it's basically the article just kind of goes through and kind of tears him into an asshole because it's, it's, he deserves it. Uh, it is not, it's not something that you do. You don't, you don't come out and say, Hey, I'm going to release, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to release a game console. I'm going to rebrand this thing. And then, uh, and then that's going to be my, uh, uh, you know, the soul, this will be the soldier game. It's got, it's got hundreds of, why would you not buy it? It's got 3000 games build in 3000 plus games build in from all these other, you know, systems. And so in a series of now deleted tweets, And I assure you, I assure you these are real. In a series of tweets, he went off. I guess he was not really, he was not really believing uh, the, um, 
the feedback about how this is illegal. I guess he wasn't, he wasn't really, he, nah, nah. So, <laughs> let me zoom in here. <sighs> what do we start, from the bottom to the top? Let's start from the top and go to the bottom. Y'all don't scare me, I'm Soldier Boy. He says, why, why y'all not bitching about other game companies selling consoles? Y'all don't want to see a black man get money trying to snitch, uh, but I'm not doing nothing wrong. Eat a dick, we're at 5 million in sales. I don't know 5 million what. He was in Dubai at the time, so it could be another currency altogether. Uh, and so I guess we have to eat a dick. Um, because, you know, whatever. Uh, and so it's so funny that you guys know how business works. Nothing's going to happen. If Nintendo was going to do something, they would have the first day. My console is not going anywhere. Everything I'm doing is 100% legit. Stay mad and I'll keep getting richer. Nintendo ain't gonna do shit. Nintendo ain't gonna do shit. That tweet is also deleted. Nintendo ain't gonna do shit. <laughs> it says 59 minutes. I want to say it didn't make it to 60 minutes. You don't fucking threaten Nintendo, man. <laughs> You know, you know, they're the ones known, like of all the game companies, they're the ones fucking known to crush anybody trying to infringe on their shit. You just, it's just, that just shows that he really did not understand the, uh, the industry. Like you don't, you don't fuck with Nintendo. That's the one you don't fuck with. And then he calls him out. He says, Nintendo ain't going to do shit. Sega would come. Yeah, I would say Sega's second. But uh, Nintendo is definitely, they're, they're the both. Yeah, you, you make a mod for your game. Uh, how, many, how many Mario Kart VR like, spinoffs have we had that have been crushed by Nintendo? Like, it's just, it's just, it's just something you don't do. And so, 69. Nice. Uh, gets stealing for a company that even abuses their own customers and fan base. Turns out to be a bad idea. Who'd have thought? On the ad, there was a Pokemon screenshot. They will own his ass. Yeah, it's done. It's done. There is, I will say, there is a soldiergame.com. Uh, I'll show you guys. I'm going to type it in here real quick first, um, just in case somebody redirected it. Uh, .com. And then if I go to soldiergame.com, okay, that should be good. It will go to this. Now, some people are claiming that Nintendo did this. Not true. Not true. This is the case of somebody else basically snatching up the, uh, the URL. Uh, basically to troll. That's all it is. It's still funny that you go to soldiergame.com and it goes to uh, to this, but on the flip side, uh, this isn't the first time this happened. Let me see. We, uh, if I go to wiiu.com, it goes to smart buy. So Nintendo's made this mistake before. So it's not, it's not like, you know, it's not Nintendo that did this, right? They're not, they're not known to buy domain names, okay? <laughs> That's just not that's just not in their uh in their wheelhouse is like acquiring domain name domain names that are important. Again, Wii got me here. Yeah, like that, yeah, like the play Diablo 4 would redirect a POE. Exactly, exactly. The same thing, same exact thing. So Soldier Boy thought he was gonna get away with it because Nintendo ain't gonna do shit. I'm so glad. I'm so glad he said it like that. Like just so much just like, yeah, like Nintendo's not gonna do shit. Fuck Nintendo, bitch. And then this happens. Oh, just fucking glorious. Just fucking glorious. And so, so he's back from Dubai and he says, uh, he said, don't bring no bullshit with you in 2019. So that's, uh, that's the, that's the last word from, um, uh, from soldier boy in regarding this, uh, this whole fiasco. I think I don't, I don't know if we'll ever hear about soldier game again. He'll probably just, he'll probably just disappear. And he says, yeah, because Soldier Game got it covered right there. Soldiergame.com. Yeah, everyone's linking it. <laughs> so he he will be, he, this is definitely going to hurt him for a little bit in terms of, you know, ego. Well, it probably won't hurt him at all, actually. It's fucking Soldier Boy. The fuck? Like, I mean, the, the guy really is, like, he really does have a name for himself because of what he's done in the past. But he has no business getting into an industry he doesn't understand. Just, yeah, he had no chance. He had no chance. <clears throat> he's about to spend some serious time in prison? No, 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 no. He's not going to He's not gonna go to prison for anything. He's just going to basically take it down and probably pay a fee or fine or something like that or 
whatever. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Mr. Boy. Mr. Boy says, don't bring no bullshit with you in 2019. Uh, Yakuza. <laughs> this is going right up the chain, man. We're getting serious with this stuff. Ah, uh, but yeah. New Nintendo Superman. De oh, you. Doom, doom, doom. Boom. Yeah. Oh man. Probably all the property made and twice as twice is fine. Yeah, probably fine. Probably all that good stuff. Yep. So so that's that's it. That's the news. That's it. Like, what how stupid? Why would you do that? Nintendo ain't gonna do shit. Why would you why would you such an such an ironic tweet? Like when you it's the same way when streamers are like, and I do this too, when we're doing something we're like and we we try to like we 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 preface an, an event or something happening. By like saying something ironic, you know, like like if you're driving in a car or whatever in PUBG, and you know you make a comment before you jump off something, and you're like, because you know that you're probably gonna like wreck in a fiery blaze, and so you say something funny beforehand, and if you land it, then you just gonna play it off, you know, it's like something you do, but you we know we're doing that. How did he not know he was doing that? How did he not know that he was doing that when he sent the fucking tweet? Ah, jet lag, Dubai, it's far away. Jet lag, man, it's crazy. What crazy is that? There are, there are fucking people around him that no one even thought about that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like somebody, someone just didn't. Uh, yeah, the bomb. Yeah, the bombs ever killing the red zone. That's fine. Oh yeah, bombs ever to the red zone. You always say that shit when the red zone hits. So that way, when it gets when it gets hit, it's funnier. Or you just don't say. I don't know. This is funny. This is it. When will Soldier Game be console be shipped? <laughs> this is why your console got removed from your Soldier Watch store two days before 2019. Yeah. In a previous interview with Rolling Stone, Soldier Boy said, "Honestly, I feel that everything is 100 legit, and there will be no reason for any legal ramifications or anything like that." Honestly. I don't have any worries at all, any concerns, because everything we're doing is legit. It's been researched. Everything has been basically confirmed that it's a green light, and we're good. Wow, that turned pretty quickly. I mean, ba basically confirmed that it's legit, basically. <laughs> basically, it's confirmed. This is fucking legit. It's totally fine. Every <laughs> It's partly the people from the outside looking in that aren't understanding the type of deals that were made behind whatever yeah wow crack crack team china 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 yeah it, it, it will work in china it'll work in like uh in in various uh you know countries where they don't necessarily respect um uh copyright law u.s copyright law but uh but yeah 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 jeez all yeah you all knew he was stupid yeah stupid stupid just stupid so I don't, <laughs> I don't see any issues with Google. What are you searching? What can you possibly search related to this that would not turn up a result? Will Nintendo push my shit in if I release a copy of their game? Like there's, there, there's every, all roads lead to yes. All roads lead to yes. Yes, Nintendo will push it in. They're going to do that. Just ridiculous. Will, will Nintendo sue me? Probably, probably. Yeah, basically, basically. <laughs> sir, sir, boy, sir, Mr. Boy, <clears throat> really ending, really ending that year on a high note. The biggest comeback. Another tweet. He said he had the biggest comeback. The biggest comeback in 2018. You heard? Yeah, it's the biggest comeback. Yikes. Ah, there might be some Sony games in it. <laughs> Apparently, the the Sony PS Classic. Uh, uh, other other consoles play PlayStation games better than the PS Classic does. That's the word on the street. I don't have one. I can't tell you, but I think that's pretty funny if that's true. But <clears throat> that's it for news. We're done. I have this bowl of delicious stuff I would like to eat. Uh, and so we're going to do that. But if you like the news show, you should probably tune in at twitch.tv slash aka Mike B. Because I'm joined by these guys who are actually, you guys do a great job. Thank you so much for like pulling up like random tidbits of shit that I can't think of like live on air. Uh, especially Ark, that last paragraph was perfect. I appreciate that. Ah, ah man. My name is Mike B. 2019. That's it. I guess I'll see you guys later. Have a good rest of your, uh, whatever. See ya. <laughs> you! <laughs>